let's start watching 10 most hated characters in video game let's see what they gotta they gotta share and let's see what we're going to talk about uh, just a some of the most hated video game characters Any Today we're going to talk about 10 of some of the most hated video game characters. Any really great story needs a good villain, and while there are plenty of sympathetic or understandable bad guys out there, these guys generally aren't. They either go way too far, or are just plain despicable. So let's get started off with Micah from Red Dead Redemption. Three McKean, how's it going? Hey mate, I uh, can't really talk right now, but leaving a tab open for you. Thank you so much. I hope that you guys are doing well. Having your uh, dinner, your special dinner, your Friday dinner. Um, thank you for the lurk. Lurk. Thank you. Rockstar really knows how to make a character that you can love to hate, you know? Oh, and by the way, uh, everyone, I've always, I'm always watching with sub subtitles because uh, my ears are a bit fucked up, so. Officer Tenpenny, Big Smoke are pretty bad, but they're still weirdly likable in some ways. Micah is not one of them. He's just a miserable yep. little snake that spends the Agreed. entire game being pointlessly hostile to Arthur Morgan. You sure about this, Micah? Mr. Morgan, I never thought I would be so pleased to see your face. He's selfish, he's randomly, almost cartoonishly violent and obnoxious. He's just an all-around odious character that's more of an annoyance for most of the game than a serious threat. He's really like dirty, gross, cowboy bad guy 101. And now as the game goes on and the leader of the gang, Dutch, becomes increasingly unhinged, Arthur tries to pull him back from the brink, but Micah just keeps enabling Dutch's paranoid fantasies, even though he's ultimately the one that ratted the gang out to the authorities in the first place. Now, when you finally get to kill this two-faced coward at the end of the game, it's one of the most satisfying moments in the game. Like, even if it's at the start of John Marston's downfall, it was yeah. still good. Next over at number nine, most Metal Gear Solid villains have some kind of sympathetic ulterior motive for what they do. You know, Liquid Snake wanted to help the genome soldier and a bunch of other issues yeah, motive for what they most all right so let's talk about uh micah all right so i i i had a problem where i started the game the red dead redemption 2 game on stream and i used to talk quite a lot while playing and i wasn't uh, that invested in the game itself so it was hard for me to uh feel the same uh grudge against micah because i didn't I wasn't very, uh, I didn't feel very connected with the, with Arthur and what's going on there. Um, and I played uh, quite a large part of Red Dead Redemption 2 on stream and it was quite a large part that I actually missed uh, in terms of connection. Oh, sorry. So, yeah, I, so that, that problem, that, that was a problem with the game. Um, but actually it was yeah, pretty interesting. Um, um, but, but I do agree. I do agree at the end, uh, the last scene, the last level where you kill Micah is very, very good. They did very good. Uh, very, um, how do I say it? How do I say it guys? Um, they did a very good job in making it, uh, meaningful yeah you know, that the word that I mean. meaningful it was very meaningful for me after i stopped playing it on stream i got invested more in the game and it made it much more uh meaningful for me when i killed it because i really thought that them well, let's kill the son of a bitch and it's happened <laughs> you know and i really enjoyed that i really enjoyed that i agree with them um is it my the most uh in the top 10 of my of uh, most hateful hated uh uh antagonist i don't know i don't know i'm not sure i'm not sure that he is one of my 10 uh, it, it, i'm not sure that he's in the, that he's in the top 10 but let's continue
Metal Gear Solid villains have some kind of sympathetic ulterior motive for what they do. You know, Liquid Snake wanted to help the genome soldiers and a bunch of other issues. Solidus wanted to free the world from the Patriots' control. But Volgan has no such ambitions, man. He, he, I mean, he wanted to advance the Soviet Union's place in the world. But otherwise, he's mostly just like this cruel, sadistic lunatic that really revels in the suffering of others. The role of the sympathetic villain in this case goes to the boss, of course, if he played the game. You know, her motivations only become more clear during the ending, but Volgan doesn't get any explanation. He's just like a paranoid jerk. He just tortures Eva guy. for his own pleasure. He beats a man to death by punching and kicking the character Granin in a drum can. Mm -hmm. And in one of the most oh, sickening that. sequences in the whole series, he beats eats Snake within an inch of his life. Like, a tense torture sequence follows where he instructs the boss to cut out Snake's eye, and the whole sequence of events leads to Snake getting blinded in one eye by a stray bullet. Oh, damn. Hmm, let's play with time. <laughs> Series creator Hideo Kojima loves to put his protagonist through the ringer, but no character gets it as bad as Naked Snake, and that's mostly at the hands of Volgan, this bully, this completely hateable dude in the series. Next over at number eight, look. All right, so I, I um, the only Metal Gear Metal Gear Solid game that I played was um, Phantom Pain, and I hadn't finished it because uh, I I didn't feel like um. I don't know, I, I didn't really connected with the game. Although it is a good game, gotten a lot of features, but I get that the reason it might be the reason because I haven't played this this I uh, the Metal Gear Solid series before. Um but I don't know, I don't know. Um I didn't really connect it with to the game, so I haven't finished it yet. Um so yeah, I I have no <laughs> I have no, uh, you know, I have no opinion on that. Look, a lot of people love Sephiroth, but just as many people hate him. As a villain, he's pretty damn cool, especially back in the 90s when, like, being that brooding leather jacket psycho was kind of in the style at the time. Now, for most of the game, he's just a mysterious and sinister presence, but not anything particularly hateable. Hell, it's almost like there are more hateable bad guys in this game and all of Final Fantasy. But you know where this is going. You know, Aerith is one of the main party members and a fan favorite. You know, she has a positive attitude and a spunky personality that made her an easy character to like. Yeah. So the tragic moment where Sephiroth appears out of nowhere and kills her, kill of course, everyone. remains one of the most shocking events in any video game ever. Yes. I don't hate him, by the way. I don't hate him. I haven't been playing JRPG before. It wouldn't be that big of a deal if she came back or, or you could revive her somehow, but nope, there is nothing you can do. If she was one of your mains, you know, like your main party member, then you were basically screwed. She's gone forever. You gotta replace her. RPGs rarely, if ever, kill a party member for real. And when they do, they're usually temporary or just in games where, you know, you can cycle your party members constantly anyway. Final Fantasy VII wasn't like that. Aerith was there from the beginning, and when Sephiroth kills her, she's gone for good. And it was more painful if you were a 10 year old like me and you had a crush on her. That single act made Sephiroth a video game bad guy legend and one of the most hated antagonists of all time. Next over at number six. All right, so I haven't played uh, the Final Fantasy game, any of them. Um, most people, most people that I know, not uh, most people that I know, have been growing up on uh, Final Fantasy games, um, and I didn't because I didn't have a PlayStation Two, so I couldn't play. I, I back then I really wanted to, to try uh, fin Final Fantasy Nine, I think. I think that I really wanted to try 9. I don't remember. Um, and I only vaguely heard about the game. I didn't know much. I've learned about Final Fantasy a bit more in the last few years. Um, Sephiroth. Uh, it's interesting, by the way. The English... Uh, uh, when Sephiroth... No, um, <clears throat> sorry. When Sephiroth... Uh, in Sephiroth cameo... Uh, in... Uh, Kingdom Hearts. Um, there was there was a there was a funny uh, funny fact 
Fun fact. Uh, Sephiroth voice actors in Kingdom Hearts in, in English is uh, the bass player, the bass singer. So, the bass singer of. What was it? Damn it, I forgot. Bass singer of. I'll tell you in a second. I'll tell you in a second. I, uh, there's, there's, I wrote it on my TikTok video. <laughs> All right. Um, and sync, and sync, the bass singer of and sync, uh, Lance bass. That's interesting. Uh, he's the voice actor of Sephiroth in Kingdom Heart. Um, uh, let's continue. Seven, let's take a hard shift from like JRPG mega awesome bad guys uh, to a more hateable, different rock star character. Oh, Roy yeah, Earl sir. is one of your primary partners in LA Noir. You know, he, he's your man yeah, during Cole Phelps's brief stint on the Vice desk where he acts like this huge dick the entire time while also being extremely crooked. Now, by the end of the game, you find out that he's closely associated with the entire urban redevelopment fund conspiracy and is basically the enforcer for like protecting all the people involved in this grift. Cole tries to expose it all, but it is eventually killed pursuing a serial killer who is a key part of the whole thing. Now the game ends in an appropriately noir way with Roy Earl, the man who tried to ruin Cole's life and who's basically responsible for his death, gives a eulogy at his funeral while all the corrupt officials who wanted to bury Cole's investigation stand in applause. Now unlike Micah from Red Dead who at least gets a bullet for all his hateable behavior, Roy Earl gets away with it. He gets away uh, scot-free and he, he just doesn't really get much more hateable than that. I'm not surprised Next over at number hate. six, the Dragon Age games have plenty of monsters and jerks Dragon and Age, lunatics running that. around, but the most hateable in this series has got to be this dude, Arl Rendon Howe. Played with the perfect amount Is of dismissive like Age, smugness by the absolute freaking legend Tim Curry, Arl Howe is, is basically the underling of Loghain, you know, the, the primary antagonist here. But while Loghain has an understandable one. reason for doing what he's doing, Arl Howe is just a power hungry and duplicitous coward. You get to see the worst of him if you choose to play the human noble origin where he acts like a friend of your father's, but the moment he's gone, Arl Howe just turns into a traitor. His men slaughter your family and your entire staff, which sickeningly includes children. So that alone makes him pretty hateable. Oh, it takes a long, long time before you can finally get your revenge on this dude, but man, is it sweet they when it finally happens. The only downside is that you, you can't make it worse. Like hacking this guy to death with a sword just isn't enough for some people. Yeah. Make a spit on you. I just him before deserved that. more. Over at number five, yeah, let's talk Tony Hawk's Three. Underground. In comparison to everyone else, what do you say? Didn't Over you? at number five, yeah, let's talk Tony Hawk's Underground. In comparison to everyone else on this list, Eric Sparrow's is... crimes are right. pretty tame, you know? He's not killing anyone, you know, at least not intentionally. He's just an obnoxious- I mean, how the hell it is uh, a Tony Hawk game that many people played, but many people didn't play. One of the characters come fifth in this video. I, I don't understand that. I, I actually, well, Micah, uh, I don't know if he's more, if the character is more hated than Micah, but at least people know Micah, you know? Damn it. Just kid who eventually gets jealous of you, your, your character's success. He's this constant annoyance for pretty much the whole game, but the thing that really turns this from like a kind of an annoying sidekick into a true asshole is when he changes the tape of your most impressive stunt to make it look like it's something that he did. Oh, I still get mad at this one. Your character is the one that actually managed to do this sick thing where you jump over a helicopter in a level, but Eric takes all the credit because he was there. Like I said, in comparison, it's not so bad, but I think what makes Eric Sparrow so uniquely hateable is how relatable he is. You know, we've all known a kid like this at one time or another, the little twerp that constantly gets into trouble and wants you to bail him out, the kid that talks you into doing too. dumb stuff and then blames you for it when your parents find out. You know, that that kind of thing. That it's a type of person you don't see too often in games, and while Thug is anything but realistic, Eric is a type of person we've all had to deal with, and that's just what makes him really hateable. Yeah, something like that. Next over something at number like four. Um, when I was, uh, I think, 17, 
16 or 17, I had um, a bad influencer friend uh, in my in my class, and he made me he not he didn't make me he um, influenced me to start uh, smoking, which was short period, but uh, it's not well. It wasn't for a long time, but. Uh, I stopped. I didn't see a reason for it, so I stopped. Um, but what more happened is that that guy uh, used to steal things from people, and what more? Oh, oh, oh! So he came to my house a few times. Um, my my school wasn't. Uh, I, I I lived. 10 minutes walk, even less than 10 minutes walk from my school. So, <coughs> so I, I invited him to my home, my house, my mother was there. And he just got in, opened the, he just got in to my house and opened the fridge. For some reason, opened the fridge and checked what, checked out what in there. And my my mother came to me and asked me, "How what 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 kind what type of person a guest coming to someone's house and opening the fridge, just without asking, without anything, just opening the fridge?" And it was a guest, although it was a friend, it's not wasn't a very good friend. It was a new friend, and I agree. Now I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at it back then, um, and I should have said something. I didn't. I don't know why. I, di I didn't think that it just a bit such a big deal. Um, but when I'm thinking about it now as an adult, um, if you can, you know, if you can call me an adult, I'm thinking about it. And it just, I don't know, just not right, not right at all. Let's talk Dark Souls. Now, like That's Sephiroth, the Souls. thing that really makes Latrec here so hateable is less what he says and more just what he does. The Souls games have their fair share of nasty characters, you know? But a lot of them have some weird quirks to them. Latrec, though, this dude just sucks. It's a little suspicious when you find him locked up in a jail cell, but talking to him makes him seem all right. I mean, like, he's not any crazier than anyone else in these games, so you trust him. But that is a huge mistake. The earlier Souls games, like Demon Souls and Dark Souls, try to pull a few bullshit tricks on you, and this one is the nastiest. You got the option of leaving him alone or freeing him from the cell, but it doesn't actually matter. He gets out either way. He eventually starts hanging out at the Firelink Shrine, and he seems like just another NPC, but if you get far enough in the game, then when you get back to the Firelink Shrine, you'll find the entire place dark and the bonfire becomes unusable. Now, Latrek killed the Firekeeper, Anastasia, oh. and because of that, you can't use the most important save point in the game. Like, the Firelink yeah. Shrine is basically like that whole central that, hub. That really it's hateful. like a key yeah. location in I the agree. game, and this guy ruined it. It's possible to get your revenge and restore the Firelink shrine but it's such a pain in the ass that it's probably better to just kill this guy the second you see him the firelink shrine is one of the few safe havens you have in this game and this guy takes it away from you so we hate him for that next over at number three let's talk kamoshida the first primary antagonist of persona 5 you know there's a lot to say about him honestly the persona fan wiki describes him pretty much perfectly saying that and i quote kamoshida is a lustful vain cruel and utterly selfish bully which yeah, yeah that covers it he's a former professional athlete and the coach of the school's volleyball team which in any normal story would make this guy barely worth thinking about the problem is is that you play as a high school student anyone who's done school sports has probably met someone kind of like this guy you know sometimes a total jerk that like peaked early in life and takes it out on everyone around them that's only the half of it though what really makes this guy hateable is what he does in this game he seeks out relationship with his female students. He abuses his male students with torturous training regimens and is for all intents and purposes a full-blown predator in the worst possible ways. And on top of all that, he's protected by the principal and the students are afraid yeah. to speak out about him in fear of reprisal. When you finally yeah, manage yeah. to expose his crimes to the world though, it is so satisfying. This guy is so bad that it makes every other villain in Persona 5 seem like kind of a letdown in comparison because he's just that hateable. Now over at number two, we're going to... I mean, uh, I haven't played Persona 5. I haven't played... Uh, 
um, Final Fantasy. I played a bit of Kingdom Hearts, um, and and it's it, and I think about it, I may, missed quite a lot of games, and and a lot of them are Japanese games. Uh, I played Pokemon on my Game Boy back in the day, but the only Japanese game that I play ever played and really really drew me in was the Yakuza franchise. Uh, although I didn't enjoy the JRPG style of Yakuza like a dragon, uh, which I'm gonna get a fun effect in a second. Uh, Yakuza like a dragon is a good game, very good story, very good story. I really enjoy this story, the story, but I didn't enjoy the fighting part, and it was pretty annoying. But I did it. I managed to finish it, and I managed to um, overcome the obstacle that I didn't like. But so yeah, so yeah, the Yakuza game was my most favorite. I haven't played Judgment and Lost Judgment yet, um, but I will, I will, I'm planning to, maybe I will do a video about it, <clears throat> sorry, maybe I'll do a video about it, um, and I wanted to say, oh yeah, the Yakuza Like a Dragon, so apparently Yakuza Like a Dragon is not the Like a Dragon uh, Yakuza game, because there was a few, I think three more Yakuza Like a Dragon, and another, uh, add to the title title uh in japan that wasn't released in any any other place in the world but i don't remember their name and even if i did i don't think that i can play them because i don't understand japanese and they didn't add any english subtitles damn it we're gonna go a little old school for this one i mean okay sweetican 2 actually came out a few years after final fantasy 7 but it sure looks older I right this now this classic rpg starts off hot by introducing one of the most hateable villains of all time this dude called luca blight i mean of course he's a bad guy but his antics are legendary the whole story starts off with him getting your entire unit killed as a pretext for his invasion of a neighboring country that's the level we're starting at here you were a member of his army and you still get slaughtered just because this guy wanted an excuse Dude. to invade his neighbor he only gets worse from there though like one of the most infamous sequences happens like a few hours into the game where luca invades a town and kills everyone except for one person who he orders to crawl in the mud and oink like a pig and then he kills him too of course he just had to humiliate him first Ugh. at least kafka could crack a joke once in a while do the whole joker thing in final fantasy 6 you know before his atrocity and war crimes. Meanwhile, this guy doesn't even try to be likable. He's just nuts. Now down to number one. Let's talk about. A peek. All right. So I haven't played this one, uh, this game at all. But it made me think about um, based on what do they do. Um, all right. So yeah, Ted Farrow. But what? How do they che check the most hateful ones? Is it the stat a st stati st statistic or is it something that they personally think? Uh, because there are a lot here, a few here that I don't know. Hey, but Brad, welcome in, Brad. How are you, my friend? How have you been? How was your last stream? I'm lurking your stream quite oftenly, uh, but I, I don't have uh, the time to talk. So I, I'm not saying hello. So I apologize for that. Um, so we are, you know, reacting for YouTube videos. Um, I hope you, you're doing good, Brad. I hope you're doing good. Uh, I think that I might uh, come back to, for, to streaming, you know. I mean, I, I think that I might uh, go back to streaming full time. Um, I got this, uh, this idea. I will react more. I will play. I think that I'm, I'm, I'm planning to start playing World of Warcraft. You know, just for the fun of it, just for uh, the sake of, uh, I don't know, the sake of playing a game. But maybe later, maybe later. Just right now, we are reacting to the ten most hated characters in video games, and we got to number one. And he says, Ted Farrow Ted from Farrow. Horizon, Zero Horizon Zero Dawn. I mean, who Zero else Dawn. could be number one but this guy? What makes yes, Ted Farrow is. so unique is that Awful. he's actually not an antagonist. Awful. He's not even a character you ever actually see. Like he's just uh, a guy yeah. whose you know, story is entirely it. told through audio logs and the computer terminals. Oh, he just, but yeah. he's so despicable that that's all you really need to hate him. 
Basically, he's the guy responsible for destroying the yeah. world of Horizon. Not even yeah. once, but technically twice. He's yeah. the founder of Faro Automated Solutions, Horizon, the robot the manufacturer that eventually created the deadly nano swarm known as the Faro Plague that was responsible for destroying all yeah. the life on Earth here. That part, at least, you People can chalk it up as kind of a mistake. You know, his short-sighted greed is definitely partially responsible for alive. bringing about this apocalypse, but it's what he did after that that makes this guy like a legendary ass. Yeah. If you didn't play the game, you know, as this world was slowly being consumed by the plague and things were looking bad, a team of scientists created the Gaia system, which yeah. was meant to bring life back to a devastated world and eventually restore the old world using a massive computer database and science stuff and Apollo. And then as the world ended, Pharaoh had a mental breakdown and using his special clearance, he managed to gain access to the Gaia control system yes, and delete the destroyed. Apollo servers, yeah. essentially destroying all of humanity's combined knowledge in a single yes. stroke because of his misguided belief that this information would somehow make the new human race less pure. Of course, another part of it was that Pharaoh wanted to cover up his past. At this point, he was completely nuts and thought that he'd become the ruler of a restored Earth. You eventually find out his ultimate fate in Horizon Forbidden West, and all I can say is uh, it couldn't have happened to a better guy. Sarcasm. Yeah. Anyway, those are 10 absolutely detestable villains in video games. We know there are so many others out there, though, so we want to hear from you down in the comments some All of right, your. So, so here's the thing Ted Pharaoh <clears throat> in Horizon Forbidden West, you don't see him because uh, apparently it's too grotesque, but you can see a, a, a graph, a, a, another graph, but you can see a hologram very. Uh, a very faded hologram that shows how does it look like a bit and it and it and it, and it looks horrible so yeah you can't you can't see him in the game but yes this is fate picks we can definitely survive definitely make a follow-up to this video so hit all us right, up so if you enjoyed this video though and like talking games with us clicking the go. like button's all you got to do it helps us out yeah. and if you're new it was an interesting uh, I do enjoy Gamerangs, I like it, I liked it, um, I, I do enjoy Gamerangs.